In this lecture, we will look at uh, specific families of drugs and the pathways and structures they target in bacteria. The first of these pathways is folate synthesis. It occurs in bacteria, but mammals cannot synthesize it, so must obtain folate from, from the diet. Para-amino-benzoic acid, or PABA, is required to make folate. Folate is required for DNA synthesis. As the pathway in the diagram shows, this is a two-step reaction involving two enzymes, one called dihydropterate synthase and the other called dihydrofolate reductase, or DHFR. These are involved in forming something called tetrahydrofolic acid that is used to form the purine nucleotides in DNA. This allows for selectivity of drugs that interfere with folate synthesis or action. Some target dihydropterate synthase, such as sulfonamides, while others target DHFR, such as trimethoprim. As shown in the schematic on the bottom right, sulfonamides are structural analogues of PABA and can therefore act as competitive inhibitors. They are bacteriostatic, not bactericidal, and therefore suppress the division of cells. Similarly, DHFR inhibitors such as trimethoprim resemble the pteridine ring of folate, as is shown in the diagram on the right. It mainly targets dihydrofolate reductase, but also is active against mammalian enzymes, but requires much higher concentrations than in bacteria. As is indicated in the table showing IC50 values, trimethoprim is very active against bacterial enzymes, but not human, the human version whereas methotrexate, which is a drug used to treat cancer and rheumatoid arthritis, it is not antibacterial due to folate uh, it because it requires uh, active uptake by cells. Most sulfonamide drugs are given orally and are well absorbed, except for uh, one of the members called sulfasalazine. They tend to be widely distributed and can cross the blood-brain barrier and placental barrier. They are metabolized mainly in the liver, and the major metabolite is the acetylated form, which itself lacks antibacterial effects. Side effects of these drugs include hepatitis, in some cases, hypersensitivity reactions, and renal failure due, due to interstitial nephritis. Trimethoprim, on the other hand, is well absorbed and widely distributed. Following absorption, it reaches high concentrations in the kidney, lungs and cerebral spinal fluid. Trimethoprim is a weak base and its elimination increases with decreasing urinary pH. Side effects can include folate deficiency in some people with resultant megaloblastic anemia related to their pharmacological action. Folate synthesis inhibitors are used clinically. Um, a combination of trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole, called cotrimoxazole, can be used to treat a particular infection in AIDS patients called pneumocystitis carinae. With the sulfonamides, there is widespread uh, sulfur drug resistance, um, but they can be used to treat infective, infected burns topically. Um, another family member uh, known as sulfasalazine is often used to treat inflammatory bowel diseases. Trimethoprim, on the other hand, is used for uh, urinary tract infections, respiratory tract infections, as well as uh, sexually, sexually transmitted infections, including chlamydia. The second major target for antibacterials that we'll discuss is the peptidoglycan cell wall synthesis. As mentioned previously, this is a unique target in bacterial cells. It consists of several layers of alternating units of the monomers N-acetylmuramic acid and N-acetylglucosamine, which are shown on the left. Each of these layers then is connected via an interpeptide bridge between the NAM or the M units on each layer, as is shown on the diagram in the right. Uh, peptidoglycan synthesis is a vulnerable step and can be blocked at several points by various antibiotics. Cycloserine, which is a structural, structural analogue of D-aniline, which is one of the terminal amino acids in the pentapeptide hanging off the NAM residues, uh, prevents the addition of the terminal alanine to the side chain on the NAB by competitive inhibition. 
vancomycin, another antibiotic, inhibits the release of the building mock unit from the carrier, um, the lipid carrier that carries these units, thereby preventing the addition of each of the units to the growing end of the peptidoglycan. Bacitracin interferes with the regeneration of the lipid carrier by blocking its dephosphorylation. Penicillins, cephalosporins and other beta-lactams inhibit what's known as the final transpeptidation reaction, which links the, um, the, the pentapeptides to form an interpeptide bridge between the NAM units, and this prevents the formation of crosslinks. These mechanisms are illustrated better on the diagram on this slide. Each drug, as can be seen, is in a red circle and indicates where in the synthesis pathway they interfere with. Beta-lactams are probably the most famous family of antibiotics, and these include penicillins, cephalosporins, carbapenems, and the monobactams. These can be identified structurally by their distinctive beta-lactam ring, shown in the diagram on the top right. All beta-lactam antibiotics interfere with the synthesis of the bacterial cell wall peptidoglycan. Penicillins attach to penicillin binding proteins on bacteria and inhibit the transpeptidation enzyme that crosslinks peptide chains in the backbone. The part first penicillins were naturally occurring, uh, such as benzyl penicillin or penicillin G, as it was known as, shown in the diagram in the bottom right, uh, as well as phenoxymethyl penicillin or penicillin V. Penicillin G is active against a wide range of organisms and is the drug of first choice for many infections still. Since the discovery of natural penicillins, there have been many modified penicillins synthesized. In fact, over 20 semi-synthetic penicillins with different R group substitutions have been generated. The R group position can be seen on the structure on the top right. While penicillins are very effective, they can be degraded by bacterial amidases and beta-lactamase enzymes. The positions at which they are degra degraded are indicated on the structure on the, on the right of the diagram. The beta-lactamase resistant penicillins include methicillin and flucloxacillin. Broad spectrum penicillins include ampicillin and amoxicillin. As many of you may have known, uh, amoxicillin sometimes is used in combination with clavulinic acid, which is a specific beta-lactamase inhibitor. This combination is used in the commonly prescribed augmentin, uh, shown on the bottom right of the diagram. It is important to consider some of the pharmacokinetics of these drugs. Oral absorption uh, varies. Penicillin G can be given by injection, for example. Um, and depending on the adsor adsorption to foodstuffs and their stability in the acid in the gut. Administration can be intravenous, intramuscular, and although less common, it can be given intrathecally also. Penicillins are widely distributed in body fluids, um, including the bile, saliva, and milk, and can pass into joints, pleural, pericardial cavities uh, across the placenta and the blood-brain barrier if it is inflamed. They do not enter mammalian cells as they are lipid insoluble. Elimination of most penicillins is mainly renal by tubular secretion and occurs rapidly. They have a relatively short half-life therefore. Side effects include hypersensitivity reactions caused by the degradation products which combine with host protein to become antigenic. Skin rashes and fever are common in some people with rare anaphylactic shock as well um, occurring in some people. Alteration of the gut microbiota can occur and this can lead to gut, uh, gut uh, disturbances such as changes in motility and cause diarrhea. Benzyl penicillin is used for bacterial meningitis, for infections with streptococcus pneumonia, uh, for endocarditis as well as skin and tissue infections. Uh, flucloxacillin is used for bone and joint infections, amoxicillin used for bronchitis as well, as well as in many other uh, mixed infections, for pneumonia, for gonorrhea, and for some UTIs as well. Cephalosporins were first isolated from cephalosporium fungus and are chemically related to the beta-lactams. 
their semi-synthetic broad spectrum cephalosporins have been produced by addition of different chemical groups at the positions R1 and R2 as shown in the structure on the top right. They are water soluble and acid stable but vary in their susceptibility to beta lactamases. There are several generations, uh, first, second and third generations of these structures have been generated and there are over 70 different clinical agents that have been developed. Uh, these include members like the first generation cefadroxyl, second generation cefachlor and uh, third generation uh, cefotaxime. Most cephalosporins are given parenterally but some are given orally. Uh, they are widely distributed and some can even cross the blood brain barrier. Excretion is mostly via the kidney as with penicillins via uh, tubular secretion but some members are excreted via the bile. Side effects like penicillins include hypersensitivity reactions as well as some nephrotoxicity. Clinically, these antibiotics are used to treat septicemia, pneumonia, um, meningitis, UTIs, uh, sinusitis and some biliary tract infections also. Other beta-lactam members include the carbapenems. They act in a similar way as other beta-lactams with uh, broad spectrum antibacterial activity. Examples include imipenem. They are often used with psilostatin to block the breakdown uh, with renal enzymes. So particular renal enzymes are known to metabolize um, the carbapenems and by using a specific inhibitor for these enzymes it can block their breakdown and uh, maintain a higher level of bioavailability. Side effects to these drugs are similar to other beta-lactams with neurotoxicity in some of these drugs at much higher concentrations. The monobactams are another subgroup with its most important member being uh, atrionum, which is resistant to beta-lactamases and effective only against gram-negative aerobic bacteria. Glycopeptides such as vancomycin act by inhibiting the release of the building block unit from the lipid carrier as we saw previously. It is not orally absorbed and is given usually for gastrointestinal infection or by, uh, given by IV injection. This can be used in resistant bacteria, but a growing rate of resistance to vancomycin is limiting its use. Side effects can include fever, rash, ototoxicity and nephrotoxicity. Gram-positive bacteria have a simple cell wall structure with many layers of peptidoglycan which is highly polar and negatively charged. Beneath peptidoglycan lies the cell membrane. This is shown on the top right of the diagram. Gram-negative bacteria have an outer membrane uh, that contains lipopolysaccharide with a thin peptidoglycan layer and a cytoplasmic membrane underneath. The outer membrane is separated from inner uh, from the inner um, layer by a periplasmic space containing enzymes and other molecules. This is shown on the diagram on the, in the bottom right. Because bacteria also contain cytoplasmic membranes, uh, it too can be a target, a potential target for antibacterial action uh, by drugs known as polymyxins. Polymyxin and uh, a mixture of collagen with polymyxin E are the main members in use. These are uh, cationic detergents and act by disrupting the outer cell membrane. They have ra rapid uh, selective bactericidal action against many of the gram-negative bacilli. Um, polymyxins are not absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract. Their side effects include neurotoxicity and nephrotoxicity. Their clinical use is restricted, however, to topical treatment of the ear, eye, and skin infections and in some cases if needed for gut sterilization in the case of bacterial overgrowth. As discussed previously uh, nucleic acid synthesis and its many enzymes shown in the diagram on the left uh, is a potential target for antibiotic intervention. Besides DNA polymerase which is involved directly in the synthesis of new DNA other enzymes such as the topoisomerase are also targets. DNA gyrase, which is a member of the topoisomerase family, is responsible for controlling uh, supercoiling, as shown in the diagram on the right, which, if not kept under control, can damage DNA by inducing breaks and cause death of cells. 
inhibiting this en enzyme with the quinolone antibiotics can be effective. Um, Nalodixic acid, which was a f the first uh, synthetic quinolone antibiotic, was introduced over 35 years ago. Fluoroquinolones were a second generation introduced in the 1980s that had improved potency and antibacterial spectrum. They are bactericidal and inhibit bacterial DNA topoisomerase 2, which is a DNA gyrase responsible for the supercoiling of DNA. The most commonly used members are ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin. Ciprofloxacin is a broad-spectrum antibiotic effective against gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, including those resistant to penicillins. They are well absorbed orally, but can accumulate in the kidney and the lungs. Most cross the blood-brain barrier. They are metabolized by cytochrome P450 enzymes in the liver and excreted by the kidney. Interactions with other drugs due to inhibition of P450, for example, um, can occur. An example of this would be with the drug theophylline. Side effects include gastrointestinal disorders and rashes in some individuals. These drugs are used for treatment of urinary tract infections, um, particularly norfloxacin and ofloxacin, uh, for respiratory tract infections with um, Pseudomonas aeruginosa in cystic fibrosis patients, for gonorrhea, um, for bacterial prostatitis, and for external otitis as well. Finally, it's important to understand how the main side effects we have mentioned arise. Two of the main side effects with most antibiotics are gastrointestinal disturbances and allergic reactions in some few patients. The diagrams shown here illustrate how these side effects might come about. On the left, it shows the normal gut microbiota and how they signal with the epithelial and immune cells in the gastrointestinal tract. This is important for maintaining the epithelial bar barrier and mucus layers necessary for protection. In the presence of antibiotics, however, the loss of gut bacteria disturbs this homeostasis and can result in the loss of epithelial integrity and this results in pathogens moving between the epithelial cells causing further infection. In the diagram on the right, it shows what can happen with allergic reactions. In the case of penicillins, for example, it is thought to bind to some endogenous proteins forming something called a haptin. This new protein product, which is a combination of drug and endogenous protein, is not recognized by the body's immune system and it therefore then starts to build a response to what it thinks is an infection. Antigen presenting cells like macrophages or dendritic cells can present antigen to immature B and T cells, which then can produce specific antibody and T cell receptors that recognize the antigen in the body. As a result, these antibodies can damage cells with the new that have the new antigen and in extreme cases cause anaphylaxis. The table shown on this slide illustrates many of the other adverse drug reactions reported with antimicrobial use. These can be on-target tar effects due to an extension of the pharmacological action of the drug, such as infection with C. difficile due to killing the microbiota, or those that can be considered off-target, uh, which can be classified as immunological and non-immunological. Shown are mechanisms related to um, aminoglycoside-induced necrosis in the renal tubules, urticaria or rashes by fluoroquinolones, as well as hypersensitivity reactions described already from penicillins.